Okay, fine. Yeah. Rolling. Okay, so what we have here is the latest um, configuration of solid state. Um, it's quite a simple config, um, but as with these things, it's quite subtle. Um, so we have a core with a single normal winding. Um, this is the input. And we have a secondary coil um, that's actually going through um, drill holes um, through the core. In this case, it's nanoperm. Again, the actual core material is really not that important. Um, the important thing here, though, is that the two coils are at 90 degrees to each other. So the primary coil is in this plane, and the secondary coil is in this plane. Um, we also have a biasing magnet, um, and I'll talk about that a bit later. The test we're going to conduct is very simple. We're going to measure the energy going into the primary coil, and that's VI. So we have a probe um, that's measuring the voltage across the coil, and a current sensor that is measuring the current through the primary coil. For the secondary, um, we have this loop, we have a shunt resistor, and a current probe, and what we'll be doing is quite simply measuring the current flowing through the secondary loop. Um, the resistance is known, um, it's a calibrated resistor, it's measured, and all the resistances are measured with a, a high-end LCR. And what we'll be doing is comparing the energy change in the primary to the um, energy extracted from the secondary. I should also point out that um, we have a flyback diode across the primary coil, um, so that any inductive energy that's going in is then just being returned and recirculating once the um, device is turned off. For a switch, we've got a little opto-isolated uh, MOSFET um, that's been uh, pulsed from, in this case, a NI system, uh, but it could really be any pulse generation. Um, but do note, however, that we're dealing with very, very small duty cycles here because we're actually pulsing only during a part of the rise time. Uh, that's pretty much the setup. Cool. Now, what we will be doing um, is a comparative test. So we're measuring the energy through the primary here um, with and without taking energy out of the secondary. So what we'll be doing there is simply connecting and disconnecting the secondary. Um, so we'll be doing a analysis with the secondary actually producing heat because it's a resistive load and not producing heat. Done. Now, three. Yeah, yeah, all tight in. Yeah, but I want to move into the screen rather than actually starting on the screen. Let's see the look. Um, so I can't see it now because you turned the thing around. Okay, go on then. The look. point is, it's not it, this. And you literally just want to square the screen. Just to square the screen from there, 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 there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, you need to keep um, these in. Okay, so um, keep set three set. Will you let me know when you're tight in? Yeah. So, okay, so the three probes, which is the voltage and current across the primary and the current of the secondary, are connected to um, an oscilloscope. And what you can see here in the yellow trace, which is on channel one, is the voltage across the primary. Um, so we have our classic um, voltage and return voltage, inductive return. The blue or cyan color here is the current through the um, through the primary, and the pink um, is the current through the secondary. At the moment, the secondary is an open loop, so there is no current flowing through the secondary. Um, in terms of scales, um, both currents are on 100 milliamps a div, and the voltage is on 1 volt a div. We've also added two maths functions in here. The brown line, which you can see here, is V times I, across the primary, so that's the power going into the primary integrated. So this represents the energy put into the primary. Now we're only measuring the current on the non-return path, so we're only seeing the actual energy going into the field creation. We're not measuring the current return through the diode. So this simply measure, uh, is a representation of the energy put into the field build, which is both inductive energy and dual heating. Um, the purple line that you can see here is the energy 
and God bless Tuck Screen and things, is the energy of the secondary, and that's simply I squared R. So we've calibrated shunt and a short length of wire, um, so it's a very straightforward uh, situation. So what I'm going to do now, that's the, that's the um, system working with the secondary or the orbo coil um, in absolutely um, open loop. So all the energy that we're putting into the primary is going to heat and the inductive return which is being dissipated through the diode and the return path. When I connect the secondary, what you'll see is, and what you'll see now is we now have current flow through the secondary. Again, the current flows are on the same scale which is 100 milliamps of div. What you will see here is that we're now producing energy in the secondary. And if I remove that, so basically, all I'm doing now is connecting and disconnecting the secondary. Um, you will note that there is a small energy change in the primary. So the main thing to do with the secondary in and out is to analyze the energy in the primary. Now, we have a small energy change in the primary. Um, and in fact, it looks like that you're pulling slightly more energy into the primary. And, and that's not actually strictly true. If you actually look at the waveform here, you'll notice that you actually are, have a faster rise time. So this is the rise time of the primary with no secondary, and if you look at the rise time of the primary with the secondary, and you can see that we're rising a little bit faster. So what we have here is a very simple example where net, net there's no real substantive energy change in the primary, and we have an energy change, or we're beginning to take energy out of the system. Um, the primary coil remains conservative in that even though there is a small inductive change um, in the system here, we do actually recover all of that. And if you did an analysis on the return path here, you'd see that the um, primary remains conservative. What's interesting about this config is you can multi-loop it. So for this simple example, we're simply taking out um, this amount of energy, but you can add more and more loops into your system. One thing to be very careful of though, the more loops you add, you will then get mutual inductance between the loops unless you're a little bit smart about the way you do it. I mentioned before the biasing magnet, and this is kind of key to understanding what's happening and that what we have here is really a balance between permeability changes and domain rotation. And what the biasing magnet does is it obviously provides a different permeability to the core and subsequently a different change in permeability, uh, but it also gives us domains to rotate, which is the reason we have any EMF in the secondary at all. The positioning of the biasing magnet is quite critical. You won't be able to see this in the shot, but I'm just gonna move it a millimeter or two. And what you can see is it can actually have a very substantive impact. So indeed, if I remove it completely, what you'll see is we're just getting whatever remnant magnetization remains in the system. So while the system looks very, very simple, as with all these things, there is an element of subtlety um, to them. What we'll be doing with this system, and people, are, people want to go off and try and build one now, feel free to do it, but what we'll be doing with this system is providing this packed on, an own, on its own little circuit board, we call it the prover unit, where people can actually go off and do these measurements themselves. On it will be the ability to measure, obviously, resistance, um, V and I, um, because 99% of people don't have current meters, will be putting calibrated shunt resistors on the system. Anyway, that's pretty much the effect. Let me just turn off channel one, so again, you can see the, I'll turn off all the channels except the energy channels, so you can see the differentials here. They're both on the same scale, I should point out, so the energy of the primary and the energy on the secondary are on identical scales, and that's the incremental energy from the secondary coil for one simple loop. Obviously, you could add many, many more loops if you wanted to. That's it. Cool. Um,